Welcome back Gundam guys and Gundam gals. Patrick Wood here from GGNFNews.com. This time bringing you part 2 of the review for the RMS 108 Marisai from the Unicorn Anime. And like part 1 of the review for the Marisai, this video is going to be posted up on GundamReviews.net or Gundam.tk. So thanks a lot for watching if you're coming from there. And of course go check out Robert184's awesome channel and page. So here I'll take a look at the mobile suit I'll put together, its weapons and accessories, and see how everything turned out. So here we go. Alright, so before we get started with the review, I'm going to go over this rifle real quick. I don't think I covered it in the first video. It's a pretty simple design. A couple detaching points here. The handle can come off the side. And the ammo pack at the bottom can also come off and go back on if you want it to. So one color, but there's a lot of good panel lines as well if you want to line those with a marker. And even though the design is pretty simple, I think it looks pretty nice. Alright, so here's the Marisai all put together, and overall I think it's a really nice looking kit, especially with the new color scheme. I was really off put by the red and pink color scheme of the previous version, but the dark green and, and light green really work well together. Of course, as seen in the Zakus and stuff before. And the orange or salmon color does a good job of adding a little bit of extra color here and there, especially in the elbows, around the edges, and the back of the knees and stuff. So, definitely a good job of adding a little bit of extra color with the trim. So as far as articulation, the front skirts can come up quite a bit, allowing the legs to come forward for a pretty decent kick. The back skirts can move around as well and allow the legs to move backwards quite a bit. About a 90 degree bend there at the knee. The feet are can swivel around quite a bit on the joint there. And because there's no extra moving parts in the hips, they can only come out about that far. Waist articulation is limited by the hoses going around the edges there, so it can only go side to side about 45 degrees. Arms are free to move around 360 foot them too. That one can come out about that far, and his left arm can, can't do quite as much because of the bulky shoulder pad here. This shield can spin around if you want it to, and collapse around and do all kind of cool shapes there. And the head can do 360 if you get everything out of the way. So as far as articulation goes, for an older style high grade kit, this is really good. Nothing too lacking as far as uh, bending and stuff. Even the elbows can do around 90 degrees or so. So everything's pretty good. I think it looks really nice too. Again, the color scheme really helps this design quite a bit in my eyes. I've never been a big fan of the Char color scheme in general. The light and dark red. So yeah, definitely pretty cool. Lots of good detail. A lot of nice panel lines on the legs and the feet as well as in the chest and the shoulders and stuff. So overall, very nice looking kit. All right, so the shield is pretty cool. It can swivel quite a bit on its axis point there attached to the shoulder. Get quite a bit of movement out of the flaps here and kind of put it everywhere you want it to go. On the bottom flap here, there's a connection point for the beam saber handles. And you can step them into place there for some secure storage. Now it shows in the manual that this is supposed to go on this way with the hole for the beam saber blade poking up. Uh, but I assume you could also flip this little thing around to be able to attach the beam saber blades to the end of the shield like this if you wanted to do so. I doubt that was ever done in the anime or anything, but that's still a possibility. So that's kind of cool. And one small issue that I have with the kit is that there are not enough hands to hold all the weapons. Uh, we get three different hands. We have a sort of a loose grip hand here for the right arm. Also on the right arm we have a trigger finger hand for the rifles. And then a very loose grip or kind of a, a fixed posed hand here on the left arm. And having two beam saber handles doesn't really work well with the holding both at the same time, especially in this hand. On the left hand you really can't get it to work at all. There's not enough grip there to hold on to and there's no peg to pick anything in place there either. So that's somewhat disappointing that you can't hold on to both beam saber handles at the same time. Alright, so here's a look at the kit with beam saber blade in hand. Looks pretty nice. And to show you before, like this other hand for the left hand doesn't do a good job of holding the other beam saber blade at all. You can sort of get it in there at a weird angle, but it's not really going to work. So there's a look at the fading rifle in hand here. Like normal HGUC operation, you just separate the fingers from the top of the hands to put the handle in place. And that way you get a pretty secure connection there. It's a little loose fit. The rifle does kind of slap down on the hand. But because of the way you hold it, 
kind of under the elbow there. It stays in place pretty well. And you can also reach across and have it grab on with the other hand. So it's a pretty good pose with a long rifle. And the fading rifle also has a secondary function as a beam saber handle. So you can swap out the hands, add the blade to the opposite side of the rifle here. You get a pretty cool looking effect. It's more like a beam saber staff, I guess. But the hands are really where this kit shows its age. They don't really work all that well with the kit. You really have to fight with the hands sometimes to get everything to work right. But I think the end result of the rifle and the beam saber blade is pretty cool. And this effect is supposed to mimic the Zeta Gundam being able to shoot the blade out of its rifle as well. So since the suit came from the Zeta Gundam series, this is kind of where that came from. And the left hand loose grip hand can sort of hold on to the, the handle. The weight will always make it kind of tip up though, but you can sort of hold it there in the left hand. So there's also a third way to hold the fading rifle as a beam saber weapon in hand. You can use it like a tonfa. Use the rifle handle but reverse it. And that way you get a pretty cool effect there as well. It works pretty well, but there's the, uh, the, the hump and the forearm here kind of intersects with the rest of the rifle. So it's not quite perfect. So it's not quite perfect, but I still think it's a pretty cool way to do it. Alright, so here's the Marisai with the original beam rifle in hand. Looks pretty cool. Kind of small though when compared to the rest of the kit with its overall bulky design. And even though it's kind of small, you get some good poses out of it. You can reach the left hand across the chest to grab onto the secondary handle. Looks pretty good there in hand. Alright, so here's the Marisai with the Great Serpent weapon in hand. Or at least the collapsed version of it. Sort of like the beam saber handles, it kind of slides around in the hand, doesn't stay in place very well just because of the looseness of the fingers. So it doesn't look like much right now, just sort of like a frag grenade or a weird beam saber handle. But when you attach a clue to wire with it, you can get a pretty cool little effect going on. It holds up the weight of the tip pretty well. Again, the only real problem is the hands, slides around the hands. It can kind of clip it in place on the fingers, but because of the weird weight on the top here, it pops out pretty easily. So I might need to use some sticky tack or something else to give the handle a little more friction. Just to be able to hold on to it a little better. Alright, so let's go ahead and wrap up the review by talking about a few of the bad points and the many good things for this kit. So for the negative points, I have some issues with the hands. First of all, we don't get enough of them. We only get three different versions. Two right and one left. And they don't seem to hold the weapons as well as they should. Especially with the skinnier handles on the beam saber blades and the great serpent. It would have been nice since they included the new rifle to include a new plate of hands too. Like with the Delta Gundam, I'll show that off soon, uh, there's a separate plate just for the hands. And they seem to be kind of a generic version, nothing uh, specific about them. So that would have been kind of cool if they included that plate with this guy as well, to add some extra functionality to that. So aside from the somewhat inept hands, there's a minor issue of a little bit limited articulation. Specifically in the waist, it can only go side to side about 45 degrees, and that's mainly because of the hoses coming out around the edges. And the knees are a little bit limited at only 90 degrees, but it's a bulky suit, so that's to be expected anyway. But those articulation points are minor, it's not a real detriment to the kit at all. Especially for being a little bit older of a kit, I think it works pretty well. So aside from those few negative issues, I think the kit's pretty fantastic overall. You get a variety of nice weapons, with one brand new one to the kit with the fading rifle. You also get a, a nice updated color scheme, when compared to the original looks a lot better in my opinion. I much prefer the dark and light green over the dark and light red. I know I said that before, but it's a pretty big deal in my mind. The articulation is pretty good, aside from the somewhat limited waist articulation. The shoulders and the arms work really well. The feet can be planted pretty nicely. And the shield works pretty good as well. So I think the marriage side fits in really well with the rest of the sleeve suits, even though it doesn't have any of the typical sleeve emblems on it, on the chest or the cuffs or the knees. I like how the sleeves repurpose all these old suits and put them back on the battlefield, like the Zaku 1 and this guy and the Dryson and stuff. So it's good to see these old suits being used again. So I definitely recommend this kit to anybody who's a fan of the Unicorn series or the older UC stuff from Zeta. With the updated color scheme and the new weapons and stuff, I think it's a fantastic buy. It's a cool build too, even though it's pretty quick. So some of the parts of the legs are pretty neat to build. The new weapons add a lot to the kit as well, and give it some new life, even if you have the original Marisai from 2007. So definitely go over to ggunfinite.com and pick up your own kit. I think you'll have a good time with it. So let me know what you think of the video and the kit with the comment down below. And of course, thanks a lot for watching. And thank you to Gundam Guy for providing the kit. And also thank you to Robert184 for posting up this video on his site. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for more videos and I'll see you soon.